Welcome back everyone. Today what we're going to be discuss discussing is 4.B, linear models. So the goal is by the end of this lesson for you to be able to develop your own linear mathematical model, apply that to the modeling cycle that we discussed last lesson, predict the outcomes based on these models that you create, construct models based on real life situations, and then create these models from multiple situations. And I'm going to give you all the tools you need to achieve those goals. So let's get to it. Let's first talk about what does linear related mean? Okay, that's the first word we're going to go over. Just think linear, 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 linear. What do you think that means? It means line. That's pretty much in two variables are linear related. There are two variables that are connected by a straight line. Line. All right, so let's go over an example to explain this. Ted the taxi driver. He charges, or now we can say Ted the Uber driver, charges passengers an initial fee of four pounds, and then he charges them four pounds and two pounds for each extra kilometer traveled. To study, to study the relationship um, between the distance traveled and the cost, we construct a table of values and draw a graph. The cost is dependent on the distance traveled, so we place D on the horizontal axis, the distance traveled on the horizontal axis, all right, and then we place our C, our cost in pounds, on the vertical. All right, so, um, actually this should just say, and then two pounds for each kilometer travel. All right, so, as soon as you get into his taxi, automatically have to pay four pounds. Now, every mile you go after that, you add an extra pound. So if you go anywhere from before one mile, kilometer, sorry, kilometer, you go four pounds. You go one kilometer, you go six. You go two kilometers, you go eight, and so on. All right? And that's pretty much how it's set up. All right? What are you doing? You're adding two. You're adding two pounds each time. So four plus two pounds is six, plus two pounds is eight, plus two pounds is ten. That's two pounds as well. And that right there would be your gradient or your slope of your linear graph. Um, graph. The four would be your, we'll get to that in a second. Now, the graph of C against D, this is the graph based on the table I just gave you. The graph of C against D is a straight line. Look at it, it's all those points perfectly. So C and D are therefore linear related. Notice the graph, the C intercept. This is the same as the y-intercept, but since we're solving in terms of c instead of y, we call it the c-intercept. What is the c-intercept of this graph? It's your initial fee. The c-intercept is 4. That's where it intercepts. So when you first start off, it is 4. This is the initial fee in pounds of the taxi ride. All right? The gradient, another word for gradient is slope. Your slope is rise over run, also called gradient. So when we're finding the slope, what we're doing is, okay, what is the slope of this graph? So let's look at rise over run. To get to this point, I have to go, on, it doesn't matter what two points, I go up two, and then I run one. So my slope or my gradient is two divided by one, two over one, or two, right? The variables then, okay, that's the cost of each additional kilometer traveled. So to get to each point, up two over one, up two over one. I could have done it here, but then my lines get mixed up. It's just for aesthetic reasons. Variables are related by the linear model. So this is what happens. This model, right here, can only be used to predict the value of one variable given the value of the other variable. For example, okay, for a 10 kilometer journey, the cost of that 10 kilometer journey is what? So we can predict that. So when D, equals 10, can we find out what C is? Of course we can. All right, C, we just keep on going up. Up, over, up, over, up, over. Even though it's not on this graph, eventually, off the screen, you'll see it. So we can create an equation. Y equals mx plus b. Your dependent value, variable, equals your gradient or your slope, d plus your intercept plus b. Y equals mx plus b. So I can plug in d for here, which is 10. 
y equals 2 times 10 plus 4, which equals 24. The cost of the 10 meter journey is 24 pounds. All right? Good? Any questions with that? Good. Exact and approximate model. So the taxi in this situation, the cost of the follows a specific rule. The relationship between C and D is exact. All right? We can use our linear model to find the exact cost C for any distance. I can plug in any D I want and find out what the cost is. In many situations, however, right, the connection between the variables is not exact. It's an estimate, okay? So when we plot a set of data points, we may observe a linear trend, okay? So that trend suggests the linear model, which will be good for an approximation of the situation. So you're not getting an exact answer, you're getting an approximate answer, which is still good because we're not going crazy. We just want, like, say you want to know about what it will cost, and that's a good answer. For example, the table below shows the number of customers at a restaurant every fifth day after it opens. Now, you're not going to have the exact amount every single time. That's just weird. That'd, that'd be, like, crazy. So if we plot their points, so what I did was I took each of these points and I plotted them right here. All right? On the graph, we can see the variables are an approximate linear related of the line C equals 60 plus 50. And that is an approximate model for the data. Now, how do we do this? We're going to formally construct this model in chapter 5. So we're not doing it yet. Okay, I'm actually making the chapter 5 notes now. We're going to learn how to do this. But just a quick note, you do a best fit curve through the middle. And if you're not using technology, you would take the intercept here, which is 20, 40, about 50-ish. All right, there's 50. All right, and then you see what the slope is. You pick two line points that are on similar um, crosses. So this goes from 5. And what's this one? 15, so you go also from 80, 100, 120, 140, so you go up 60 over 10, 60 divided by 10 is 6, so you can create your graph that way. It, but notice, none of these are really exact. This one got lucky, but none of the other ones are, So, but it gives you an estimate. Okay, so this is estimating at 30, your answer is going to be like um, 230, so you're off by 4. At 20, your answer is going to be 180, so you're off by 2. All right, at 10, your answer is going to be 110, so you're off by like 8. So you're going to be off by a couple people, but you can have a general idea. Most important part of your model is your extrapolation. What that is, the process of predicting what values you have beyond the range of data points. For example, um, care must be given for this when using an approximation model. You can't just throw any type of model out there. You have to have some type of rhyme or reason. For example, we could use the model to predict that on the 100th day, this restaurant will see how many customers. So we could make a prediction, um, and then we'll see if it makes sense. So we're going to say, OK, C equals 6 times 100th day. So we're going to say on the 100th day, there's going to be 650 people at that restaurant. Now, does that make sense? We don't know. I'm going to say it doesn't. I'm going to hide the answer. You know why it doesn't make sense? The reason is, this assumes that the linear trend, the trend you have, continues far beyond the graph that you're given. So usually it works for a little bit, like the, the data in between the points, and maybe even a little bit beyond, but it doesn't work forever. The reason for that is, why? The restaurant will have a, what does a restaurant have? that normally you have 650 customers there. There's a maximum capacity. You're only allowed a certain number of people in the restaurant. It may be maxed out every single night, but you can't have 650 customers in a restaurant that only holds 300 people. You can't put people on people's laps. Fire code, not allowed. All right? All right, let's go to the next one. Let's go do some exercises. This graph shows the cost C in dollars of buying X bottles of juice. Juice is good for you. Find the model connecting C and X. So we're going to create these models, right? I don't know why the other one said wait for chapter 5. Oh, because these are so nice and we don't have the best fit anything. Now, first thing, what do we want to find first? 
our C intercept, right? What's our C intercept? What's our C intercept? Y equals mx plus b, right? So what's our what's our intercept? Zero. Starts down here too. Now we want to find our slope. So you can do this one of two ways. You can do it manually, do rise over run, or the more correct this is more correct. The better way to do it is pick two points on this graph. Now the points you want to pick are points that pretty much are even points. So I would pick this point probably and this point. Let's see if those are the two points I pick. So slope is rise over run. One way to do this is I can go, okay, to get from here to here, I'm gonna go up five, and I'm gonna run, not how many boxes, how many numbers, I'm gonna go over two. So my slope here is five over two. Y equals, which is about 2.5, Y equals 2.5 X plus zero, or C equals 2.5 X. All right, now, another way to do this is I can say, oh, this point right here, this point is two over, five up, this point right here is four over 10 up. I can use the slope formula. Y2 minus Y1, 10 minus five, over Y X2 minus X1, four minus two, five over two, which is what I got right there. You can solve it either way, it's up to you to your preference. All right, is this model an exact model? The model is exact, why? Because all these points lie exactly on the model. If one was off by a little bit, it would not be exact. Therefore, the model is exact. Dot, dot, dot. Therefore. Can the model be used to find the exact cost of 12 bottles of juice? Yes. How would you do that? Each juice box costs $2.50. So how do we find 12? Plug in 12 for X. X is the number of bottles. 2.5 times x, 2.5 times 12 is $30. Each juice box costs $30. I mean, not each juice box. For a dozen for 12 juice boxes, it would cost $30. Each juice box is $2.50. That's what I'm saying. All right, good. The next one. Problem number two, do this one on your own. An electrician charges $60 for a call out, plus $45 per hour he spends working on the job. So what I want you guys to do is try to complete this table real quick. All right, so first thing we look for is the initial cost. So call out is his initial cost. So $60 is the amount he spends originally. Just for him to come out and look at your job is $60. Now $45 per extra hour, so you're gonna take this number, Add 45 to it, get 105. Add 45 to it, get 150. Add 45 to it, get 195. Add 45 to it, get 240. Add 45 to it, get 285. All right, so you're just adding 45 to each initial amount. Now, we got our table. We're gonna draw a graph of C costs against time. Remember, time is always your independent variable. Time always goes in the denominator. I mean, not the denominator, your horizontal axis. That's always gonna be your domain, all right? So, let's graph the points. Zero over 60 up. One over 105 up. Two over 150 up. All right, three over 195 up. Four over 240 up. Five over 285 up. Now, is there a linear model connecting these? Can I take this and draw a line through it? Yes, look at that, it hits it perfectly. There is indeed an exact linear model that explains this. Now, what is it? So let's find out what the model is connecting the two. First thing you need to do is y equals mx plus b. So what is our y-intercept? Our y-intercept is the initial amount at zero. Well, what did we say that was? The call-out fee. The call-out fee is $60. So that's your initial amount, y-intercept. Your slope, you're going up and over, right? Now our slope is how much he spends per something. Well, you don't have to do any math because it tells you $45 per hour. So after you start here, you're up one, wait, up 45 over one, up 45 over one, up 45 over one. So our slope is 45. Y equals 45X plus 60, but our Y is our C, so we put C equals 45, 
instead of x, we put t plus 60. And there you go. You just created yourself a linear model from a graph, from a table. All right? Use your model to determine the electrician's total cost for a job that lasts six and a half hours. Well, since t is hours, what do I do with the six and a half? Put it in for t. C equals 45 times t plus 60. Plus 60. C equals 45 times 6 and a half, 13 over 2, wait, 13 over 2, 6.5, apple error pit. Multiply the two of them, add 60, and you get $352.50. You create a table, use that model to create a graph, extrapolate the model from that graph, and then you solve random information. Next thing, a tank contains 265 liters of water. If the tap is left on and 11 liters escape per minute, we're going to do the following. First thing, construct a cable. So the tank initially contains how much water? 265. 11 liters escape per minute. So what are you doing? You are subtracting 11. So at zero minutes, 265, right? 11 per minute, so after one minute, minus 11. Minus 11. Minus 11, minus 11, minus 11. All right, so that's what your table should look like. B, let's draw the graph. 0, 265. Start here. 1, uh, this is a 54. What about here? 2, 243. 3, 232. 4, 221. And 5 to 10. All right? Find the linear model. So, what's our B? Two sixty-five. What's going on here? So, B is two sixty-five. Your initial amount. The y-intercept. Your slope. It's going down eleven, so it's going to be minus eleven. All right. 11 liters escape per minute, minus 11. So y, or v, equals negative 11, t, plus 265. There you go. Now we're going to determine things from the model that we created, from the graph and the table we created from the real-life situation. Putting everything together. Determine the amount of water left in the tank after 15 minutes. Well, let's see. These t are in minutes, so we don't have to convert our time. All right. 15 goes in for T, V equals negative 11 times 15 plus 265. There is negative 165 plus 265 is 100 meters left. So after 11 minutes. Now you may say, wait a second. This should intercept this at 7. But if you're looking closely, there's a break in this graph. Notice it jumps from 0 to 200 to 220. They just broke the bottom part of this graph, so you don't really see it there. Um, so it's very important that you do check those things out. But what we can do is we can take the time when the tank is empty. So when the tank is empty, what happens with this equation? Good. Your V ends up equaling 0. 0 equals negative 11t plus 265. And now you're solving for t. You are going to subtract 265 from both sides. Negative 265 equals negative 11t. You're going to divide both sides by negative 11. And you get 265 over 11, which is positive. Divide them, and you get 21.24.1 minutes. You could do 0 0.1 times 60 and get 6. You can do 20, uh, 24 minutes, 6 seconds if you like. But you can just leave it like that. Either way, it's okay. There you go. Race this stuff, and we keep moving. Let's go on to number four. This is a quick and easy, uh, a quick and easy lesson. About two thirds three. I don't know how to say that. I'm not gonna pretend. Um, Zanu maybe planted 30 centimeter high bamboo plant in her garden bed. 
she found that with consistent weather, it grew exactly 10 centimeters a day. All right, complete the table of values. So what is our initial amount? How high was it originally? 30 centimeters, right? And then 10 centimeters a day, you're gonna add 10, so you get 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. Got our table, like tables are good. Draw a graph of H against T. Initial amount is 30. Is it going up or down? It's going up. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Is it linear? Draw a line through it. Yes, it is. Looks like a pretty good graph to me. A lot easier than the last lesson, right? Once you know the basics, everything else becomes pretty simple. But we're not done. We still have C, D, and A. So part C, discuss whether it's reasonable to continue the line when T is less than zero or when T is greater than six days. So look at this right here. If T is less than zero, would you continue the line this way? No, because you don't really want to go back in time. Um, when T is greater than six, what do you think? Reasonable? No. Why? T less than zero is not reasonable because, like I just said, time can't be negative. Now, greater than six really isn't reasonable because the plant will not grow at the same rate forever. It's not Jack and the Bean stuff. The plant is not gonna grow up into the sky forever. You don't know how long it's gonna grow until it stops. Trees don't grow up and up and up forever. Eventually they stop. Um, H of T has to be the domain, all right? So the domain is T is gonna be greater than or equal to zero. All right, you can also make it, you can assume for um, the purpose of this model though, that it grows at the same rate forever. So we're just gonna leave it greater than or equal to zero. No one's gonna ask after 100 days how tall the tree is. So just keep it. It is an inaccurate model, which is true, yes, but it is, it is. So what's the actual model here connecting them? 30 centimeters high is our B. 10 centimeters a day is our M. So y equals, you're going to say h equals, the t is always going to be the x, h equals 10t plus 30. How long will it take it to be? One meter high. One meter is how many centimeters? Well, centimeter, 100 centimeters is one meter, right? So one meter, you can invert centimeters, 100 centimeters. Centi, 100 meters. How do we do that? We plug in 100 for h, and then we solve for t. 100 equals 10t plus 30. We're going to subtract 30 from both sides. You get 70 equals 10t. And then you divide both sides by 10, and you get t equals 7. So it will take approximately 7 days for this bamboo plant to grow 1 meter high. And 1 meter high is approximately this high. It's not exactly a yardstick, but it, is this a meter stick? Oh, this is a meter stick, so it's exactly the size. Right? I think so. Can't tell I have the ends. Nope, this is a yardstick. So it's about that high. Problem number five. You're doing this problem now. As punishment, we got three more problems today. For misbehaving, bad Jack. Jack must pick up litter at lunchtime. The table shows how many pieces of litter he has picked up after T minutes. All right, you have your time T, you have your volume V. The graph shows these data points as well as the linear model is N equals 8T plus 0.2. So that's given to you. Is this linear model right here an approximation or exact? Look at the line going through the points. It is approximation. Why? The line doesn't go through every single point. All the points are not on the line. Look at it. So it's an approximation, it's a pretty decent one, but it still is approximate. Use the model to predict how many pieces he'll pick up after 20 minutes, and then discuss how accurate you think this is. All right, so T is in minutes, T is right here, we're gonna put it at 20. N equals eight times 20 plus zero plus two. Eight times 20 is 160 plus 
0.2, so it's about 160 pieces of lead. Do you think that's accurate? It's your thinking, so you could be right or wrong. No, I don't. Let's see. The, oh, the estimate is probably inaccurate because this is an extrapolation. We only go up to five. You're going to have to go five times the domain of here. All right? What probably happens is there'll probably be less litter. Because after you pick up a bunch of litter in the first five minutes, you get like all the big spots. Then for like the next 15 minutes, you're picking up spots that don't have as much litter, so it'll probably be less. It's an assumption. You could be in a very dirty place, um, but that's what I would think. Your thought can be different. Maybe change my mind. Convince me. I'm open to change it. All right, problem six. Six, six, six. Six, 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 six. And then we got problem. That's it. That's problem. Graph shows the world record times for the woman, 400 meters. 400 meters is one time around a track. When Marlene Matthews ran a record of 57 seconds on January 6th, 1957. And Marta Koch record of 47.6 seconds on October 6th, 1985. Oh, she beat her by 10 seconds. The data modeled with the straight line equals 54.85 minus... 266,000x, where y is the time in seconds, and x is the number of years since 1957. What well, does the model predict the time will be in 1957? All right, so this is your model, okay? Notice that the times here are really high around this time, and then they jump down and then they really got a better line. So when you put your line through here, you don't get exact numbers here. But what this asks is not what Marlene Matthews time was in 1957, but what time does my model predict? So let's look at my model, and my model predicts what? What's the y-intercept here? 54.85. So when x is zero, all right, zero is zero years from 1957, your time would be about 54.85 seconds. Now, why is this different than the 57 seconds she ran? Explain it. All right, hopefully you explained it correctly. Um, the reason it's different is very simple, because this is a model. This is not exact, it's an approximation. Okay, they ran a lot slower back then and they got a lot faster, and then eventually to today they're even faster and faster and faster. Can we estimate the world record prior to 1957? Can we keep on going backwards? The answer is no. Um, the reason for that is it would work maybe for a couple years before here, like up to here. But if you go like in 1900, someone's running the, what's that, the 400 meter in two minutes, that doesn't make sense. Because even some of you guys can do that. All right, it would begin to predict unrealistically large times way before that. Also, if we try to predict in the future too far, no one's going to be running a 400 meter by themselves in 10 seconds. So you can't really go that far ahead. Anyone in this class, can they run a 400 meter in under a minute? Anyone? I don't think I can. Anymore. I think I may. No, I don't think I ever did. Alright, so the graph shows the world record times for the woman. Same thing. Florence Griffith Joyner. I remember her when I was growing up. Holds the woman's 100 meter record. 100 meters is a quarter of the way around the track or almost one of those straightaways, a little bit less than one of those straightaways, of 10.49 seconds. In what year does this model predict the woman's 400 meter will be completed in 10 and a half times 4, 41.96 seconds? So can we predict this with the model? Sure. We just make our y equal to what? We solve for y, or which is our t. We know that x is our time, right? That's going to be 41.96. All right, sorry. Uh, what's here? Y. Our time in seconds is 41.96. Our x is the years from 1957, not the year. Subtract 54.85. Divide by negative 0.266. That's 48.46 years from 1957. So 1957 plus 48 is 2005. Um, well, well, wait. In 2018, when this book was written, 
her time of 47.6 seconds is still the world record. How is that possible? How come we're not down to 41? Well, because these are just models. There's people that are extremely fast and rare to come around. For instance, I don't know when you're watching this video, but there is a Jamaican sprinter, Usain Bolt. He used to stop racing the last 10, 15 meters and still beat people by tons of time. There is no one even close to him. Um, I don't know when the next person that will even come close to his time is it. There was a swimmer, Michael Phelps, um, in the 2010-ish teams and stuff. He destroyed every single record for swimming for all, tons of events. No one's gonna come close to him for a while. All right, there's just some people that are just so much better than everyone else. Um, that's why, all right? So there's, it's not su suitable to really extrapolate the future times because you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know what's gonna happen in the future. So it's really just useful to do in between the start and finish times. All right, after 2018, improvements in times really are no longer linear. Now you don't know what they're. Now they're more of a plateau, and they may go slightly down, but it's not crazy like it used to. All right? Now hopefully, all that information right there that you just took in helps you understand what a linear model is, okay? So until the next lesson where we end up going piecewise and changing up things a little bit, I hope you guys learned how to create these models with tables, how to create the tables to graphs, graphs to models, models to extrapolate some data. And just remember, just do it in the time frame that your model suggests, right? So until the next time I see you guys, have a good day.